Hey, what's up guys, Jared here, and today we're gonna to be talking about how we load images asynchronously inside of our application. And so if you can remember from the last video, we talked about how to use an API, and the API that we used was Unsplash. And so now I wanna actually take those images that we got back from Unsplash and load them inside of our application. Now this will be a super quick tutorial because we are actually gonna be using someone else's code and it's being updated frequently and I mean, it's what I do for projects and it works great. And so shout out to Vader right here. As you can see, he like updated these things 10 hours ago. And so we can just go ahead and go into it and start working with it. If you wanna check out this GitHub link, it'll be linked in the description down below. So first off, we just need to download the files, right? So let's go ahead and download the zip folder. And once that's downloaded, we should be able to open this up. And the main things that we're looking for here are the files right here. So we have async image, the image cache, the image loader, and the environment values plus image. So these four files right here are exactly what we need to actually put inside of our application. So going back into our application, we can go over to this. Let's create a new group. I'll just call this async image. And then we're gonna go ahead and take these four files and click and drag them into our project. Then once you have these, everything should be working A-OK. -okay. And so first off, before we actually start implementing this thing into our application, let's understand it a little bit more. So first off, you have the async image.swift. This is essentially the view, the view that's going to be shown and that you're going to actually put inside of your application. But this view initializes a few things. So first off, as you can see, we initialize it with a URL. The URL is going to be fed through and be loaded up. I'll explain that in just a second. Then we can also provide it with a placeholder. So the placeholder is basically what do you want displayed while the image is loading. And so that's very neat, very helpful as well. And then lastly, once the image has loaded, it'll go ahead and take the image and display it. Then you can see here for the body content on appear, it'll say loader.load. So this is what I was talking before. So we have basically the image loader here, the image loader.swift. And so the image loader is basically where all of the data processing and handling is actually happening. So you can see this down here specifically in the load function. So this is what's being called when our async image is displayed. It'll say image load image loader.load. And so first off, we have this guard statement here, is loading. So this is gonna let us know whether or not it's loading the image or not. And this is saying, if it's not loading the image, meaning we're already done pro loading the image, then there's no need to load it. And so therefore, it's just gonna go ahead and return and everything's gonna be act normal. Then this bottom part here is gonna be if let image equal cache for the URL. And so basically, we're as we're pulling these images in, we're also caching them inside of our system. Now, this is all being handled inside of the image cache.swift. And you'll be able to see a few things here. So we have let cache equal an NS cache. The cache count limit will be like how many images do you want stored at a given time. It has a limit of 100, and that means if it goes over 100, it's actually going to start deleting images from the cache, which is great for memory management. And then you can also see this here, cache.totalcost limit, or how many megabytes or how many gigabytes you want to be able to be stored inside of your application. That's all going to be handled there as well. As you can see, the default is 100 megabytes. And so this is just a way to make the image cache global, essentially. So as you can see inside of the async image, you say environment slash dot image cache. And this is what it's referencing the, for the environment values here. And so you won't have multiple image caches going on at the same time. It'll only be one image cache that holds all of the images. All right, so I think that's a pretty good explanation. If you guys have any other further questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. Um, but let's go ahead and start putting this inside of our application. And so the first thing that we need to do is pretty simple. So let's go over here to our content view.swift. And then instead of saying this text here, we're gonna go ahead and replace this with async image. Open parentheses, and we should be able to see this one where it says URL, placeholder, and image. So for the URL, what are we gonna use? We're gonna actually use the result. So let's go ahead and type in URL, open parentheses. This is going to be of a string. We'll say result dot urls dot small and then we'll add an exclamation mark after that then for the placeholder this is going to be any normal view you can put text in here you can put a color in here you can do really do whatever you want for me i'm going to go ahead and put color dot black and so it'll just show a black color as things are loading then for the image this one is where things get a little bit more interesting so this is where we're going to say image in and then we're going to say image open parentheses this is where we're going to provide it with a ui image and then we're gonna give it the image that was just returned. And then as you can see, this is returning a view here. So generally with images, you wanna say dot resizable so that the image actually 
conforms to the size of the photo. But if you actually want to edit the size of the image, you're going to have to go over here. So this is where you can say dot content mode, or sorry, dot aspect ratio is equal to dot fit or something like that. Or if you want to change the frame of it so that it's like it generally going to be 100 by 100, that's going to affect that there. So let's build and run this. Let's see if this works. And so there you have it. So as you can see, things are kind of like they start out black and then they load up with images. And so one really nice thing about this is it's not reloading the images every single time. And so therefore the scrolling is very smooth. Everything happens very smooth and it's just a great user experience overall. But anyway, there you guys have it. This was a very quick video. I hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, let me know if you want any more quick videos like this in the future where we just explore certain frameworks or certain like code snippets uh, from different parts of the internet. This one, it's very useful. I've used it in multiple projects. And so shout out to v um, you're amazing, okay? Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one. Ciao.